<laughs> oh, he's so cute. Travis. Just... Travis. What? what? Oh, hey everyone, this is Travis with Full Spectrum Laser. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to engrave a photo all the way from the software to the machine to the final product you can put on your wall. Stick around. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. The software I'm gonna to use to edit the photo today is called GIMP. This is a free program that you can download. It's open source, so you don't have to pay any kind of fee to use it. Just open your browser and go to gimp.org. That's spelled G-I-M-P dot O-R-G. Right at the top, you can download the latest version of the software. I would recommend to download GIMP directly so you don't have to download a BitTorrent to use it. Once you've downloaded and installed GIMP, go ahead and open it up. When you get the blank screen, select File and Open. From here, you're going to find your picture. Find the picture that you have that you're going to want to edit. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's cute. All right, anyways, so uh, from here, we're going to want to go to Colors, and then we will want Saturation. This is really easy. Just drag that all the way to the left, and it will turn your image black and white. Push OK and continue. Then we're going to select colors again, and now we're going to do brightness and contrast. You'll want to adjust the contrast up until the whites become more white and the darks become more dark. If you need to adjust the brightness too to kind of get those brights and the darks to pop, go ahead. This will take a little bit of trial and error to figure out. You'll want to get to a point that the details are still there, but the image will look slightly overexposed. Push OK when you're done. This is the easiest way to get a photo that will engrave well. When your photo is to a point that you think it's ready to go, go ahead and export it as a PNG. From here, we're going to go to File, and then Export As. Find a location on your computer that you want to export. Zane is cute. No, 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 no. Zane is super cute. Let me change that extension to PNG. I'm going to export it to my desktop. You can just push export. You don't have to worry about any of those checkboxes. And now we want to load up the Muse. Once you have RE3 loaded up on your computer, you're going to want to start a new project. Once you have the new project loaded, go ahead and go to File, Import, and then Image slash Drawing. Now remember, when you see the photo in RE3, it's not going to be as high a quality as when you actually engrave it. So don't worry if it looks a little blurry like this. If you're worried about the quality, you can change the resolution. You can change it from 250 dpi up to 500 or even 1000. Just remember, every time you go up in resolution, this will also extend your engraving time. Since I'm using Amuse 3D, I'm going to do a screen capture. So go ahead and load up your materials in the machine and then I'm gonna capture my workspace. Mm -hmm. There it is. If you do not have the screen capture option because you're using a core or your camera just, you don't use it, you can actually use the run perimeter option and it will be a lot quicker than using the camera. Now we're going to size the picture to our material. All right, 
So once you have your project properly sized on your material, let's go ahead and dial in the settings and run it. If you aren't sure, I would recommend to go ahead and use some spare wood of the same type to run some trial and error tests, or you can do a power test. Looks kind of good, kind of cartoonish, but I think we can do better. We're gonna go back into the software. I think it could be a little bit bigger, so we're gonna crop the photo in GIMP. Use this little tool here, and then just crop what you think needs to be removed. Push enter and you're good to go. Now let's export that and put it back into RE3. And I exported it, see? All right, let's get rid of that smaller photo and add the other by going to File, Import Image Drawing. There's the new one, super cute, too. Gonna put the material back into the machine, close the lid, and I'm gonna capture the workspace. Now, if you have a Muse Core, you may just have to use the Run Perimeter option, but we're gonna position our image on the project. Now, size accordingly. I'm gonna have it overlap a little bit this time, just so it covers more of the wood. All right. Now, the last time we did it with half tone. I'm gonna switch this over to Stucky, and then up the resolution from 250 to 500. The power seemed to work fine, so we're gonna try this again. Man, yeah, that is so much better. I mean, check that out. That was just with the Stucky and a little bit higher resolution. Gosh, that kid's cute. <laughs> I made that. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.